Welcome to our 16th video with data structures and algorithms. And we're talking about uh, our linear time selection algorithm. And the idea was to find a good uh, split for partition, right, to select the ith element uh, out of an array. Uh, so we did this in five steps. First, we divided uh, the array into, uh, for our Example here, we're going to use n over 3. Okay, we can use 3. We used 5 in class, but um, we can do any number, all right, just to see how this works out. So we're going to divide a into n over 3 groups of 3, and that's 4 because um, we may have an extra uh, couple of elements that uh, did not get into groups of 3, right? We're like we have an extra element at the end. So we did that. The second step was to find the median of each of those groups, right? We did that by, um, let me just write this here. So we did that by sorting each group independently and just taking the middle element, right, the median. Uh, and that took us big O n time, right, if we use insertion sort. Um, same thing with the top, right, big O n because all we had, we had went through the array and just divided uh, it up into groups of three. And then we find the median of the medians, right, that we found in uh, the second step, right, by recursively calling the select, right, on uh, that n over three uh, number of medians, right? So running time of this would be n over three. Okay, ceiling ceiling because if we have uh, an even number of groups and we try to take the median, right, we have two choices. Uh, so we'll take the higher of the choice, right, the ceiling. And then uh, in part four, or in step four, we partition A around that median of medians that we found in step three, okay, and our partition, uh, you know, runs in and uh, big O n time, right? It's linear. So let's say we partition uh, everything around that median of medians, and then we know how many elements, right, are on the left side of that, and we know how many elements are on the right side because partition uh, gives us back the uh, index of where uh, it placed our median of medians. And in step five, we have three scenarios, right? Either, uh, and this is would, this would be our basically our best case right here, is if uh, if that median of medians was actually what we were looking for, right? Then we found it and we're done. Otherwise, we need to recursively call select on either this side of the partition, right? Because if i is less than k, right, it's somewhere over here, or it's somewhere on this side, right? So these will be recursive, right? This will be, uh, these will be T of something, right? Of something. It's not a two, that's a question mark, but you get the idea. So <clears throat> let's look at this uh, visually. So we said we, in step one, we, right, divided up our array, right, into groups of three. Let's see, I'll just draw these out. And maybe we had some on the end, okay? Now, that was step one, right? So that was big O-N, took us big O-N time. Now, just to kind of make this redundant, right, we have three, three elements here, and here, right, we have n over three floor, okay, floored because we don't want to um, really take these into account here, right, so that was step one. Step two was to find, uh, sort these, right, so that's what we did, we sorted each one first, right, so this is a a little 
less than or greater than, whatever way you want to look at that. Right there, right? So we sorted everything this way. Sort it the other way too. Doesn't doesn't really matter. Okay, so and then we found we put the the middle element, right? So this was our median. So we found all these medians here. So that was step um, two. And that's also big O n. So we'll just combine those two. So we have big O n so far. And then step three came. So we, we have to find the median of medians here. Right? So uh, just visually, let's say that, you know, this is, you know, sorted, sorted groups, right, instead, right? Sorted elements here, right, vertically, sorted groups here based on this. And if we took the middle element, right, the middle median, that would be our step three, right? And that would make that this, this, Okay, and again, uh, so we said that this was recursive, right? So T of N over three ceiling, right? We have N over three elements to sort through or to, to select through just these medians. We found the median of just these medians. So we found this one, right? Sort those and you find that one. So, that was step three. Step four, we partitioned around this median of medians. Okay, so all of the elements that were less than this were on the left-hand side of it, and all the elements that were greater than were on the right-hand side. Now, we're trying to find that, right, we said that this was recursive, right? because we use select recursively, okay, on one of the two sides. So how do we figure out what this value is in here, right? Well, let's think about this for a minute. If this is sorted, right, if we think of this, all these groups as being sorted, we can see a couple of patterns, such as if, this me if all of these are less than, all these medians are less than uh, the median of medians, and all of these elements up here are less than each of the medians, then every single one of these elements for sure guaranteed is less than, okay, the median of medians. So this is less than, uh, we'll call it x, right? And same thing goes for this side, right? All these medians are greater than this one, and all of these right here are greater than all those medians. So all of these here, let's draw that out, are greater than, right, our median. So we said that we have to go to one of the two sides, right, either the left side or the right side of the median. And we wanna find out how many are actually here, at least. So how many Let's find out how many are right here. So we know that um, we need to count these. So we know that we have n over 3 uh, rows here, right? So let's start with that, or columns, I mean. n over 3 columns. Okay, now we're just counting this section, so we only need half of that, right? And really, ceiling, right, because just in case we have an even number, and we only have half, like we said, so over two. Okay, so now, we've, now we're only considering this way, right? And we're counting so far only horizontally, right? We're still gonna have to count vertically as well, but we're counting just one row here. Um, one thing we wanna do is we don't want to account for this one, right? Because if it's not there, then it's not there, right? So let's get rid of this, okay, by subtracting that out. And also this one too because we can't, um, it's better just not to worry about this. We want to find out um, at least how many are here. So we can do that, right? We can get rid of those. We can actually get rid of this whole row. So we'll minus out those two, right? Those two rows. 
we won't count those. And then, again, this is ceiling. Uh, we need to find, uh, we need to count how many are in this section here, right? This is the section that we're going for. I can just cross this out, right? We want to find out what's in here. Well, there's two, right? Everything was grouped into three, groups of three. So all of these, there will be two rows of this, right? So we have to multiply this by two because this was the count of how many we have uh, horizontally, and we need to multiply that by those vertical ones. Okay, so we have a, a pretty good count here, right? Well, we can get rid of some of these uh, ceilings by just using the inequality, right? It's greater than or equal to. And if we distribute the 2 through, then we end up with n over 3 minus 4. Okay, so what does this represent, this n over 3 minus 4? This represents, right, uh, this says that there are, um, there are at least, okay, there are at least this many elements that are greater than x. Okay, and similarly, I'll write here, similarly, um, right, there are this many elements that are less than, are uh, less than x. Why is that, right? Well, same thing. We have this, okay, and we're we're trying to find, uh, you know, there are at least that many on one of those two sides, depending upon which one is, you know, bigger or smaller. So we can safely say that there are at least, right, that many, right, based on all of our numbers here. But still, we want to go towards, you know, the the worst side, right, to make sure, you know, because if we do go that way, we will, we'll account for that. So we're almost there. So how many elements will be, you know, in the set that we recursively call select on? So we have n elements total. And we have at least this many elements on one of the two sides. So if we have tr subtract, right, that many, minus 4 here, right, that will give us 2n over 3 plus 4. So what does that mean? Well, this is how many um, elements, right, that we will recursively call select on at most, right? So this is the most. Okay, so this will be the uh, upper bound of how many elements will be on one of the two sides, right? Which is what we were looking for. How many elements will we have to call select on recursively? And there is our answer, right? Plus four.